Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's uh, comment comes from Dean Warren. He says, Hi, Dave. I have a garage door opener that would turn on its lights every time I'd use high power. I wound up installing a toroid RF choke that I had built some months before. That stopped the light turn on, but I'm curious about the different types of toroids. Is it that critical or will any value work? Well, for what you're using it for, pretty much any value would work. You need a fairly big one about this far around. Uh, he says he used a Mix 31. Uh, toroid. Now let's look at this picture and we can see what he's done. Um, this right here, it's inside the garage door opener and this is the main power coming in. And notice that he has it wound around the toroid uh, together. Okay, and here's the toroid right here and here's the back edge of it. It's flat, sort of like a hockey puck, but it's got a hole in the middle. Now the way he's wound that looks like this. You've got a transformer and he's got two wires and so this would be behind and that one would be in front and that's behind so that's in front and that's behind so that's in front and then when he winds, this is the second wire, he winds it right next to the first. Okay. Now, what that does is, in essence, this will not affect the voltage in these inside these wires at all because the fields that they induce are opposite to each other so it's zero net field for the um, for the balanced part now for the unbalanced or common mode current that comes down on both of them now normally the currents here are you got current in same time you got current out, okay? If you have a current in on both sides, this will cause it to be uh, several dB uh, for unbalanced. And this is a great way to get rid of RF on the line, okay? It's not the only way, but it is a great way. So what we see him doing here is winding these around. Now, he could have gotten some ferrite beads and put a bunch of beads around here, too. That would have worked also. Now, this brings up the general idea of toroids. Unfortunately, in the toroid market, and I do not know why this is not fixed, toroids are usually not marked. They usually have a color, but the color varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. And the manufacturer name is not stamped or painted on the toroid. It would be so nice if that industry would come together for some standards on how that works, okay? Now, I wanna look at something in the handbook here. This is in the ARRL handbook, the latest 2021 edition. Um, page 22, 12, 13, and 14 gives a bunch of stuff, powdered iron toroidal cores magnetic properties. And it gives you all kinds of design information. And you can see the different sizes of the cores. Uh, their, the sizes are T12 to T200 um, and mix 26 right here. Uh, it makes reference to a mix 41, mix 3, 15, 1, 2, 7, all different kinds of mixes here. And this is for a particular manufacturer, Amidon Associates, okay? Amidon Associates. Now down here, there is the different mixes. 
the colors, again, the amidon, okay, amidon and micrometals, and you see the material that they're made out of, what the mu is, that's the permeability, okay, and that goes uh, into the equations up here uh, in, in when you try and figure out uh, exactly what the thing is. Um, so mu and uh, uh, then here is the frequency over which you might want to use them, okay, in megahertz, and then some notes for what they're good for. Now, let's turn the page over. Here we go, continuing with iron, powdered iron, toroidal cores, uh, the measurements, okay, the number, the outer diameter, inner diameter, and thickness, all the way through here. Number of turns versus wire size and core size that you can get on one of these without overlapping. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. If you're 1103 wires, you're probably going to be overlapping. Maybe that's just to where it fills the center and you can't get any more in there. There's one last page in the handbook on this ferrite torides. These, there are uh, different conventions referring to type of ferrite material, number, mix, and type are all used. For example, all of the following designate the same ferrite material. Number 43, mix 43, 43 mix, type 43, and 43 type. Now, ferrite corporation and amidon ferrites can be cross-referenced. Okay, and it gives you the cross-reference and um, all of the different kinds of things that you, you need for doing it, some of the properties uh, that you have here for the toroids. Uh, this takes a lot of study to understand the toroids. Um, I am one to just take what they give me in the kit and wind it properly and accordingly, but other people like to wind their own chokes and so on. So uh, anyway, there's some, some material in there for you to start with. So uh, the net of this here is that uh, Dean Warren uh, did a real good job of fixing an RF problem with something that he did using a toroid. It's something that someone else might want to do. He is NO6J, and uh, so congratulations on fixing your problem. Those problems can be vexing. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, go to decastler.com support. Please subscribe. Please click like. Please check out Patreon. Please share this video. And until we next meet, 73.